Today we're going to be talking about doing VFD PMs and some of the basics behind it. Things you want to look for. This particular one is a Yaskawa. Uh, it is a, a bypass drive with an exterior enclosure on the outside uh, out in a open space. All the principles today will apply to any drive in just about any situation, any scenario. So. Let's dive into it. Let's see what, how we're going to do it and go through all the different parameters you want to pay attention to during this process. This video brought to you by Air Performance of Central Texas, serving your commercial needs since 2012. One of the first things that's really important is when you walk up to a drive to do a PM, if it is running, you do not want to just immediately shut it down and start working on it because if that drive, say for example, this particular one is on a pump that runs the water for an entire building. If you turn this off and another, another pump is not already online to take its place, you can cause the entire building to shut down and uh, start tripping alarms on the equipment. So the right thing to do is contact that building engineer or whoever the customer is and communicate with them and let them know, hey, I need to turn this drive off to do the PMs on it. Uh, what do we need to do for your building to switch over to different pumps or uh, whatever is, is the procedure for their particular location and let them decide and tell you what needs to happen. You can give input and feedback saying, well, what I recommend is let's turn this other pump on so that it can come on beside it to make sure you don't lose water flow for your entire building or air flow if this is the air handler or whatever equipment this is that is controlling. The equipment is not what's important here. It's to make sure that this drive doesn't shut down when it shouldn't be and cause a critical failure somewhere else. Once you've communicated with the customer and the drive is ready to be shut down, the proper procedure is to hit the stop button and let the drive ramp itself down on its own. What you don't want to do is just kill the drive while it's in operation. That's very damaging to it. It puts a lot of stress on the drive itself. Hit the stop button, let the drive shut down on its own and do its proper procedure. Once the drive has stopped and is no longer operating the equipment, you can then switch all the, if you have external switches, you can switch those to the off position just to make sure that it's in off from there you want to kill your main power disconnect and give that drive anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes to fully uh, cycle down the capacitors these drives do have capacitor banks that charge and they have to bleed down for safe operation if you're not careful even after you kill that disconnect you start going in and tightening connections prematurely those capacitors could still have a charge on them and you could still get hurt in the process a really smart thing that i recommend is before you actually turn the drive off go through and go ahead and take all your operational readings that you may need to get such as amps and hertz uh and any say the verifying the motor data is correct inside the drive as what the motor actually states that it is. After you have other equipment online and you're ready to shut this one down, in some situations you can test the bypass operation. A word of caution for using the bypass is when you switch that drive to bypass, it's going to be a hard set of contacts that close to turn that motor on. You're going to go to 100% speed immediately. You want to make sure that if you're going to do that, uh, it's not going to cause damage to the equipment in the process. Majority of the time, it's not. It's, it's going to be okay, but it's something to be cautious of while you're there looking at it. If you're not certain, always call, ask somebody that might know and try to find out uh, beforehand so that you don't accidentally damage something you didn't mean to. It's always really good to go through and try to verify any alarms that may be triggered in the drive or try to check the history of alarms to make sure that there is no history 
uh, there that somebody has come and cleared that may have should have got documented or needs to be followed up on or why did it trip on this alarm so that's always really important and if you see an alarm before you open it up you, it may give you an indicator of something you need to look at as you open the drive up and start looking into how this system is doing on the inside i'll show you in a, in a minute the right way of going about checking that to make sure that the drive has fully discharged so that it is safe to check and operate. At this point, the drive is off, the power is off, it's been 20 minutes. We should be safe to open everything up and see what's going on inside. When you first get the drive open, one of the things that you want to do as a first precaution is verify that the drive has fully discharged. So the way to do that is set your meter to volts DC and you're going to test the output wires on the drive. L123 or RST is going to be your inputs for your drive. T123 or UVW is always going to be your outputs for a drive. Okay, that's just that's industry standard. So on the T terminals or the UVW, you're going to check like you would check any three phase voltage at that point with power off and use that uh, DC setting on your meter and you're going to look at how much DC voltage is showing. It could read anywhere from 100 volts DC down to zero. When it gets down to zero or, or just a handful of volts, you know, say five or 10 volts DC, you're usually okay at that point to start doing things inside the cabinet. If you're still showing 20, 30, 50, 100 volts DC at those terminals, you need to let it sit longer. If you actually hold your meter onto the terminals, you can see the voltage begin to, to drop over time and you can watch it happen and see how fast it's happening if it does not drop down to zero the way it's supposed to that could be an indicator that there's a problem inside the drive and it's not bleeding those capacitors down the way it's intended to now that you're inside the drive let's go over some basic components so this board here this is your interface module for all of your uh Indicator lights and, and switches are uh, to control the drive from the outside of the panel. This is the interface display itself up top here. What we want to pay attention to is that the cables and the mounting, everything is, is secure. It looks okay. There's no damaging to the cable. Uh, we want to make sure the cable is not deteriorating or showing any signs of wear or damage. We also want to be very cautious with these ribbon cables to ensure that the ribbon cables themselves are in good condition, good shape. There's not any wear and tear on the cables themselves that could cause further issues down the road. And again, the, all your mounting looks good. From there, we move over to the main cavity. So a bypass cabinet like this on an exterior drive it's going to have some extra features that a regular drive that's on the inside may not have. For example, this has an, an, an a encased cooling system to help keep this cabinet cool that is independent of the VFD itself. So this is your actual VFD here. Everything else in this cabinet is additional components to support the VFD. This particular cabinet has actual air filters to filter the the air that's being ran and cycled through this cabinet so that we're not drawing in a bunch of dust. One of the problems with the electronic components in here is they generate a lot of electrostatic energy and that attracts dust like crazy, which is why these cabinets get so full of dust particles. So we want to filter that air properly to make sure that that dust doesn't cling to the drive and cause a failure or short internally. So the critical thing there is make sure your filters are clean and in good condition. They shouldn't be deteriorating and they shouldn't be full of dust. A lot of times they'll be washable filters. If they're not, 
they need to be replaced in that and if they get dirty or if they're no longer in good condition and can be clean in addition to the filters there are fans somewhere in this cabinet now this particular one the fans are in the bottom of the cabinet housing so what's important there is that these fans uh, are all working and moving freely you can take a screwdriver and try to flick them to make sure that they're not frozen or bound up it's also always a good idea to pull the, uh, the the power connection and verify ohms on the motors to make sure that the motors ohms are still good internally on the fans uh, if those fans fail at any point uh, th that can cause the drive to overheat which will cause other issues this particular series all the fans run together off the same power source so these are 110 volt fans so there's a relay on our relay board that fires to tell the fans to run when the drive is in operation you can check that power at a terminal block that they all tie into here at the bottom of the drive now other brands may be located at different locations they could also be different voltages some of the fans may be a DC voltage so you'll have to look at the fan and the drive itself to see and what parameters those fans operate under moving on from the fan you always want to make sure that the general condition of the cavity is always in good shape and, and doesn't have any immediate noticeable failures such as any scorching or burnt marks or has any bad electronic smells anything of that nature you always want to verify that stuff as you're going through this one of the major things that you want to check is that all the electrical connections are good and tight so you want to go through and tighten and put a screwdriver or a wrench on every single terminal that has a wire landed uh, you don't want to over torque it you can go too much but you just want to make sure it's not loose for part of those checks is you want to open up this drive and make sure that the control wires are are landed and, and tight nothing's loose and and nothing's going to cause any problems you also want to make sure that the power wires are also uh, tight and there's not any obvious signs of failure on those either such as any burnt looking or dark spots or the insulation starting to deteriorate some other connections to check are your external boards this drive has a relay board that is mounted to the side of the cabinet a lot of your standalone drives that are not in a cabinet like this that relay board may be mounted in a lower bypass section on the drive especially if it's an interior style drive you always want to make sure that anything landed on that board is is connected properly and securely from there you're going to move through the bypass section of the drive and make sure that all of those connections are tight as well a big thing to pay attention to is just a lot of visual do you see any scorching? Do you see any burnt marks? Do you see anything that looks out of place between the wiring or the components? Those are things you're really looking for and trying to pay attention to as you're going through these cabinets and these systems, making sure that it all is together and looks correct. Once you finish all your checks, you're good. Everything should look that fine. Um, document anything you find along the way feel confident in what you did if you don't ask questions to somebody who does know from there close everything back up turn the drive back on make sure you notify the customer it's ready to be put back into operation so that they need to or want to they can then from there that inspection is complete and that is how to do a proper pm on a vfd i hope this helps i hope this gives you guidance and what you're needing to do and you're able to utilize this to improve your inspections out in the field.